Hi, everyone. Welcome very, very, very much to this delightful fifth and final webinar in our series of five webinars in our Holistic Language Pedagogies Ways Forward in English Language Teaching and Learning webinar series. We are absolutely thrilled to be with you today, to have you here with us today in this community. This webinar series is hosted by Childhood Education International um, and is presented by the TESOL faculty participants in our 2022-2023 project, many of whom are here with us today. And what a celebration it has been in this month of October to hear your voices, your expertise, your practice coming forward. And we're delighted to hear from two more of you today. I'm Julie Casper. I'm the Director of Teacher Learning and Leadership at Childhood Education International in our Center for Professional Learning. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be with you and to introduce today's um, speakers and presentations. This amazing year-long project has been funded by the US Department of State and the Regional English Language Office. And we are so grateful for the partnership of that office and all of the universities where all of our participants work and institutions who have been so supportive in uh, contributing ideas and resources and allowing their brilliant faculty to share their knowledge with us. Um, we've also are so delighted today that Dr. Laura Becker is with us, who's been such an incredible part of the project. And I am going to ask um, a couple of people to say some words before we get into our presentations. Laura, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but could you say a couple of words of greeting to everyone? Are you available? Yes, yes. My 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 friend is here in the office from Ecuador, so I'm speaking with him right now. Hello, everybody. Love you guys. And welcome to all the people I haven't met yet. Um, and a, a big hug and hello to my dear friends. Um, it's great. I'm so sorry I haven't been able to attend. I would look at all the great feedback on all of your sessions and what a great contribution you all have made to, to the profession and to each other, to your community. Um, and of course, Julie and Elisa and Meg, amazing leadership, helping the voices continue to, to sing out all of your work. Oh, I mean, now we just put it into a book and we publish it, right? Because you've done so much work and, um, and I see Aliona, so great to see you. And please forgive all my old friends from Ukraine um, that I haven't been able to be more in touch. I, I started a new job, I moved, my kids all went to college, I'm selling my house. <laughs> so I've had a lot going on, but I just set up my new office and I wanted to show you my very special area that I have set up in my office. So let me see if I can get this to. Let's see. Can you see my Ukraine area? And I um I have my my thoughts of you all the time because that's exactly where I look is right onto my my lady without the face who's blessing me. Uh, so anyway, I look forward to learning today and please keep in touch, even if I'm really behind on responding on WhatsApp and everything else. So great to see you all. Thanks, Julie. Laura, thank you so much for joining and for being the heart of this project and really lifting us all up in the spring and in the summer and through our exchange in New York City and online um, to grow and learn together and giving such inspiration to the faculty in this group who, like you said, are now singing and carrying their voices and their work forward. It's such a beautiful thing. I'd also like to invite Jen MacArthur, who is the RELO officer now in the region um, and who we are so delighted to meet and to begin working with um, through this project and in the year ahead, Jen. Sure, thank you so much, Julie, uh, for the introduction. As Julie said, I'm Jen and I'm the new Regional English Language Officer. I've just recently arrived in the region last week and I'm very much looking forward to working with all of you, to working with your colleagues and to learning more about your teaching context and experience. I've been able to watch a few of the sessions, so both live and recorded over the last couple of weeks, and it's really been inspiring. It's been a super introduction for me uh, to the talent of educators in Ukraine. 
before I say anything else, I'd like to say my thank yous. So first and foremost, uh, to everyone at Childhood Education International, to Julie, Alyssa, and Meg, and any other colleagues who I haven't mentioned, thank you so much for partnering with the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv and with the RELA office on this project and others. Um, thank you very much to you, Laura, and to your colleagues or former colleagues at Hunter College uh, for making this program such a success. And I should say thank you to my colleagues, uh, current and past at the US Embassy in Kyiv, particularly Aliona. Without all of their work, none of this uh, program would have been possible and Aliona's dedication uh, to English teaching and to English teachers in Ukraine is very commendable. I feel very fortunate to be her colleague now. Most importantly, thanks to all of you. Thanks to everyone who participated in the program and who's presented as part of the series. Thank you to everyone who's joining. If this is the first time or the fifth time, it's great to have an audience. Um, but in addition to your work on this particular project and your participation this evening and over the last couple of weeks, I'd like to say thank you for the work that you do every day. Thank you for being teachers. Um, thank you for investing in your own professional development, particularly under extraordinarily challenging circumstances. Thank you for the work that you do with your students every day. And thank you for the work that you do for the future of Ukraine. What you've learned through this program, what you've shared with each other, what you've taught uh, is so wide ranging. I thought to pull in a couple of the titles that stuck out to me, but I have to say there are too many of them for me to mention. But the wide range of topics that you tackled, uh, the challenges uh, that you addressed, uh, sometimes it's easier to hide from our challenges than to face them and to explore them and to talk to other people about them. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I can't wait to hear from our two presenters this evening, and I can't wait to learn from all of you in the future as well. So thank you very much for the invitation to join this evening, and I'll pass it back to you, Julie. Most importantly, to introduce our two speakers, uh, which is the real reason that you've come tonight. So thanks. Oh, Jen, thank you so much for those welcoming words, and welcome to you. We're so excited that you're part of the team now and part of this work. And um, yes, Gratitude to every educator who is just putting their heart into this work every single day, um, especially under very extraordinary and difficult circumstances in Ukraine. Um, today, we're going to really, as you said, Jen, you know, wide ranging topics. And while our work was really focusing on English language pedagogies and how to help teachers better prepare English teachers, faculty members better prepare English teachers, um, looking at social emotional learning, psychosocial support. We also roamed the whole landscape of TESOL, right? Which includes so many different topics. And I'm really excited that today our speakers will be presenting on critical thinking and interactive teaching for professional training of pre-service English teachers. We're going to have two amazing, really thoughtful presentations followed by question and answer sessions for each one. The first one will focus on the impact of critical thinking on teacher identity development. And the second will help us look at the use of an interactive film club and that sort of technology within a cell or social emotional learning oriented pre-service English teachers training. So with no further ado, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Natalia, a brilliant, very, very thoughtful, wonderful scholar and educator an incredible listener who in our community has been um, such a solid presence in everything we do. And when you speak, Natalia, you always bring something new to light. So I'm very excited to learn from you tonight as you talk about the impact of critical thinking on teacher identity development. I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can share your screen, Natalia. Thank you very much. For your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. 
So good evening and good morning, dear colleagues. I am honored to be here and have a chance to give this webinar. First of all, I'd like to stress that I am very grateful to the Childhood Education International, the regional English language office in Kiev for this opportunity. Also, I'd like to stress that there are a lot of colleagues from my Alex Hanchar Dnipro National University, from the Department of the English Philology, whom I am very grateful for their constant support. And also I've noticed that here there is Dean's assistance for international relations, Natalia Diachok. And I would like to ex express my the biggest gratitude to Natalia Diachok because it is the person who told me about the project that I participated. And actually she emailed this message five times for me before I applied, <laughs> actually. Okay, so, so let me start. The topic of my presentation today is the impact of critical thinking on teacher identity development. Uh, so the goal of my speech is to examine the link between English language teachers' professional identity and the development of this identity through the role of critical th thinking. While thinking about the topic of my webinar, I've carried out a questionnaire among some teachers from my surroundings, so I questioned approximately like 200 teachers, and I found out that 50% of the teachers are interested in the topic of developing critical thinking skills, because strong teachers think critically. They practice the thinking art of analyzing and evaluating as they consider both day-to-day -day activities and long-term teaching and learning goals. The teachers evaluate what they have, determine what they will need, and decide how and when to assess students' uh, progress. Okay, excuse me. So, my objectives for today, first of all, three major objectives, to discuss teacher's identity and factors that influence it, to emphasize the importance of critical thinking for pre-service teachers, and to define the role of poetry in critical thinking development. Well, this is the outline of my presentation for today. So you can see six points I would like to stress to pay our attention at. Just the notion of teacher's professional identity, because we understand that identity, just teacher's identity is a wider notion. So teacher's professional identity, some factors affecting teacher's professional identity, critical thinking for pre-service teachers, critical thinking and curriculum development, critical reading and critical thinking and poetry. So critical thinking and poetry. Teachers' professional identity, it's a fundamental issue, definitely, and it encompasses uh, the overall career advancement of teachers. So because professional identity is just a framework that is created through different interactions of teachers with different, uh, different working conditions in their field of work. Definitely, professional identity is not static. Yeah, it is considered to be a dynamic thing that develops over time. Uh, and the, so many factors affect the development of teachers' professional identity, and that's necessary to identify these factors and to, to pay attention to them, because the formation of professional identity is a very complex and a very long process that is full of challenges and problems. This process takes place in just a specific cultural context and is influenced definitely by different social, cultural, political, professional, and global factors. 
Okay, so let's just pay attention at some factors that can develop this identity that influence. Definitely, this is individual and family life of a teacher. Yeah, and this individual life, it just encompasses many different components, such as of components of education, personality, some life events, family atmosphere, some beliefs and interactions. Then education, the life of a teacher, that's also the factor that influence the teacher's identity. Uh, so these are some, this educational life includes components of some interactions, contextual, formal curriculum, and different, different other factors. Employment life, yeah, the way that we work our in employment, uh, the context in which we work, some educational components of it, and uh, definitely social, political dimensions as well. Okay, so developing critical thinking is one of the most important, the central goal in education across all levels today. Uh, the, so to foster their students' critical thinking, teachers uh, uh, must become critical thinkers. First of all, they are to be critical thinkers. Thus, critical thinking should be an essential aspect of teacher training. So despite its importance, however, this critical thinking is not systematically incorporated in uh, teacher educational programs. Definitely, there are several different con conceptualizations of critical thinking in literature, and it is possible to investigate this problem, the stages of it, to look at, you know, different aspects of it. Yeah, uh, so, but mostly we follow the con the critical thinking that it could be conceptualized into two distinct but complementary way as the acquisition of cognitive skills and as the identity development. So as the identity development that we are just looking at it just now. Uh, well, I'd like to stress that there is a positive relationship between the teachers uh, professional identity and its success as an employee, yeah, because uh, the critical thinking is uh, just a link that unites both professional identity and the teacher's success. Definitely, if you are thinking about the teacher's development, yeah, we are to think about professional, professional development. Yeah, so, and uh, the role of critical thinking in professional development is very uh, difficult to always estimate. Definitely, it is of our most importance because what we name ourse ourselves, how we express uh, this, these are significant factors in determining our professional identity. Uh, so even more significant if we just take control of our careers by investing in ourselves through professional identity. And that may be just a defining characteristic of someone who considers himself to be definitely professional. Okay, so let's... Just now we'll look at some associations with professional identity, good professional development identities. Every teacher is to possess these qualities like ability to change. Yes, it's necessary to adapt to situations. You can see confidence, then effectiveness, dedication, motivation. Yes, and definitely happiness. Yeah, because those people who can't think critically, it's just difficult for them maybe to achieve this happiness as well. Okay, so 
the ability to think critically does not come naturally because it is created through the course of time and experience and the motivational language of supervisors or of leaders is one of the essential part definitely of it. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, so critical thinking definitely is very important in teacher's job uh, because as a result, uh, schools, universities, institutions, they tend to recruit professionals with high, high level of critical thinking and logical thinking as well because we understand that critical thinkers are self-aware, self-reflective and capable. A very important topic, just very uh, that we should think about. This is the correlation of curriculum, curriculum development, and critical thinking. So, this we may pose a question: Why is critical thinking important in curriculum development? We understand that sometimes teachers, especially in some educational context, like you know, in uh, state schools and even in some universities, teachers may have little control over what uh, textbooks uh, the students have, what materials to use in the classroom, about objectives and about the learning standards. But what is important in curriculum, how the materials are employed, the strategies, the teaching strategies used by the teachers to accommodate students with different learning styles. That's why this critical thinking is definitely here. It's just a must. It's of utmost importance because and the sequence in which those topics are presented. One of the major problems for a lot of teachers is learners assessment and learners evaluation. Teachers have this responsibility to evaluate their students and the class as a whole, and then decide how best to assist everyone involved while meeting requirements of the curriculum. Uh, so, because there may be some materials provided, but it takes critically thinking teachers to consider all possibilities to ensure the learner's success. Okay, and one problem is that the critical thinkers, the teachers can help, this is the diversity in the classroom. Yeah, we understand that different learners they are absolutely different and they are diverse. And uh, even the most thoughtfully designed curriculum cannot anticipate the diverse needs of every classroom. So teachers must evaluate how the standard curriculum for each grade level and content area addresses differences in language, culture, and learning style. Okay, teachers just uh, have different experience, different personality and talents. We are all different and they differ. So that is why curriculum must be carefully analyzed by educational just leaders at all levels. Okay. So as an educator, you can develop critical thinking of pre-service teachers, for example, in many different ways, but particularly I would like to stress critical reading and critical writing. Yeah, critical reading is a thoughtful and analytical approach to evaluating and anal and written material. It involves uh, actively analyzing and evaluating the text to help the reader gain a deeper understanding of the material and develop some just opinion about it. So critical thinking is also uh, just effective way in 
writing and written communication. Also, it's just allowing individuals to produce well-reasoned, well-supported and some convincing arguments. Okay, so you can see the title of this slide, The Critical Thinking Through Literature. I think that literature is one of the best ways of developing critical thinking for pre-service teachers. At least I've come to this conclusion, conclusion due to my experience because the literature gives a teacher the opportunity to engage students in discussions about the ideas expressed in literary text. Uh, this exercise benefits students in two ways. Firstly, it gives them an opportunity to express their own ideas about life and relationships, values, beliefs, interests, likes, dislikes, and then it forces them to use a more complex set of structures and a more advanced range of vocabulary. Uh, you can, as a teacher, employ literature to exploit some situation and the students may work in different modes in pairs in groups, the whole text, also the project work, but the students will have the possibility to practice expressing opinions, explaining cause and effect relationships, can Pairing facts and applying ideas they have gained from literature to new situations. And they will learn how to analyze the text based on logical reasoning and to synthesize and evaluate the information in the text. Yeah, so it's just effective tool literature, yeah, because it develops critical thinking definitely. Yeah, but if we're talking about literature, we understand that we have some prosaic text of different kinds and poetry. I would like to stress the importance of poetry and the role of poetry in developing critical thinking skills for pre-service teachers. It is commonly known that poems can bring students not only some joy, uh, sustainability, but they can help them to develop reading, writing, and critical skills, critical thinking skills for their success. Uh, poems uh, pose some challenging cognitive task for the learners. Thinking critically about a poem includes evaluating, analyzing, interpreting the message. And the students must spend plenty of time with the text applying these skills so they are able to explain their interpretations with text evidence. So the students also use the critical thinking skills to construct deep meaning of the poems. It is because understanding of a poem involves the, just this construction of meanings. Uh, the teacher can list some questions about some poetic text in terms of language, sensory images, humor, emotional intensity, quality of imagination, and so on. So in pre-reading their pre-reading activities, the students can work just in pairs or in groups and definitely discuss, develop critical thinking skills and develop their vocabulary as well. So because teachers stimulate students to think critically using poems due to the understanding and appreciating a poem as a creative work, that is a creative act itself. You see that poems are definitely some challenging, yes, and uh, 
they make students to have basic understanding of poems before they can develop their own creative interpretation. And the students use their critical thinking skills and definitely they develop them while they construct deep meanings of the poems. Well, here now you can see the portraits of the famous poets. I like you very much, Emily Dickinson. Yeah, and I use actually her poems during my classes with pre-service teachers. Definitely everybody knows your poem. I am nobody who are you. It just, it's not very long. It is very wide known, but still, you know, it is so challenging. My students adore it and I adore it myself because if we just, first of all, it is necessary before critical thinking. Maybe we with our students read this poem. Yes, we recite it because it definitely promotes this understanding. I am nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public like a frog to tell one's name the lifelong June to an admiring book. And definitely when we ask our learners to recite the poem, they do it differently, definitely. And that is also reading it. That's also the part of critical thinking and their critical interpretation through their bodies. So it's analyzed. It is easy to analyze this poem to have uh, like on the level of on different levels, on phonetic level, on lexical level, yes, on the syntactic level, and uh, just and to analyze the meaning. Actually, my students, those who study master programs now, they mostly like analyzing some deeper sense of these poems. And now I would like to show you the list of questions. Uh, uh, that we are the most debatable, yeah? And I think maybe the most useful for developing critical thinking. Who is nobody and who is somebody? Yeah, it's possible to spend hours answering these questions, yes? And if we start discussion here, we will never stop. So we'd better not, maybe. What is the tone of I am nobody? What does Bok represent in this poem? Why doesn't the author want to be somebody? Does the speaker of the poem reveal her or his identity? What feelings are portrayed in the poem? Yeah, actually this question, they just look like they are easy, but still they just generate this discussion and develop this critical thinking for our learners of our pre-service teachers. Well, one more poet that I'd like to use during my classes, Walt Whitman. That's also a lot of different poems. And let me present you. That's actually the part of his poem, Son of Myself. Yeah, it's much longer than the previous one. So that's why it is possible to divide it into some parts and to analyze. Yeah. I celebrate myself and see myself. And what I assume, you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belonging to you. I love and invite my soul. I lean and loathe at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass, my tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil this air. Born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I now, 37 years old, in perfect health begin, hoping to cease, not till death. Probably I will, the way I read it, it reminded you my intonation from the previous poem. And I noticed that when to give these two poems at one class, this intonation is very similar, maybe because my students and we, we just put our 
mind in this way. But if to put these two poems on separate classes, so this one is read much more optimistically. And a very debatable question to discuss, it's about, you can see, celebrate myself, yeah? To compare these two novels, because I celebrate myself, so I respect myself, I am thinking about myself, yeah? It's not I am nobody, this just contrast and uh, when we compare and contrast to different novels at least uh, sorry not novels poems two or three so it may be just uh, easier to promote discussion so you can see a little bit one more author that I like, Richard Kipling. It's also a very good ground for critical thinking from discussion, especially his famous poem, If. I remember that when I was nine, I learned his poem, If by heart, both in Ukrainian language in translation and in the English. And it's like a part of the motto of my life. I like it very much. And that's why I give it to my students of both bachelor level and master level, because definitely the teacher's professional identity, our personal identity influences professional identity, and we just show our students who we are. So this is my favorite passage of part of this poem. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stop and build them up with worn out tools. You know, I think that probably the last um, lines of this short you know poem written i just written on this slide it's maybe very just they fit into the ukrainian context just now because we have a lot of students who just now you know lost their homes or something of the kind and it's necessary not only to develop their critical thinking but also just to show them some inspiration something like this that's also a very good way to analyze this poem and the most debatable at my lessons was the discussion the critical discussion of the title if why if it's just such a short title but it's just a lot of meanings this title have definitely okay so Actually, it is possible to present more and more poems yeah, for discussion and for developing critical thinking because you understand that the critical thinking is the intellectual and active process of conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating information, some observation, experiences, reflections, reasoning, or communications in order to respond critically. The teachers who think critically about their own needs as well as those of their students will request appropriate professional development where curriculum requirements exceed their strength strengths. So the teachers who possess critical thinking, they will always develop, they will always develop professionally what we are doing in our community, definitely. And a lot of ways to develop in critical thinking, but uh, for me, poetry, the use of poems and literature itself, stimulating our um, pre-service teachers to read as much as possible is one of the best way for developing critical thinking. Okay, dear colleagues, thank you for your attention. Natalia, Thanks. thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for bringing us such beautiful poetry and your recitations today were very moving. And all of your thinking, all of your critical thinking around critical thinking and poetry and pre-service teaching is so much appreciated. There are a number of very interesting questions and I have a couple as well. Um, 
So if you're ready, I'll, I'll ask you some questions. Does that sound okay. good? Okay. Okay. So um, Victoria is asking which university, in which university are you teaching these courses for English teacher professionals or preparation where you are reading and analyzing poems? It's amazing. So can you tell us a little more about your TESOL program and how you're using literature in that program? Okay, actually I'm teaching at Alaz Vanchar, Nipro National University, the Department of English Philology. Yeah, we prepare both the English teachers and let's say, and also English interpreters who know several languages. Uh, actually, several years ago, we had a special subject like analytical reading, and now I have a very good colleagues, and um, we uh, com commonly discuss these problems, and within our course, major foreign language English, we give some hours for masters, for example, here, uh, to analyze some poems or to analyze some literary works to develop the thinking of our learners. And uh, we know that without it, it's not possible. <laughs> I don't know for us. It's uh, like a tradition at my department. I, I, I don't know. That's why I had such classes when I was a student. So I'm just continuing to do it. That's wonderful. And I encourage people on this call to reach out to Natalia if you want to learn more about that curriculum. Um, there's a question about how to select correctly the poems for students of different English proficiency levels, A1, A2, through B2. Um, how do you take into consideration people's proficiency in the English language when you're selecting your poems for analysis? Okay, thank you very much for your questions. Actually, those poems that I've shown, I just present to my master students. Actually, this is really a problem to select for analysis according to the levels yeah if we are dealing with like first year students second year or third year students yeah but first of all the major uh, focus for my selection may be student interest because i always make some you know questionnaires asking them what they just would like you know what they like and actually like this and mostly our masters, we have an um, analysis of American poets and American writers, but our bachelors with British, deal with British. So, so this is also, it is in our syllabi, but the exact poems are not mentioned in our like syllabi. That's why it is possible for the teachers yes, to write. Sometimes, yeah, the poem may be challenging, especially if it's like, you know, not more than one, but a little bit, old, you know, previous several ages before. But if uh, I, you know, if I scaffold it, give some vocabulary, and if it's interesting, everything is okay. The, the main idea is motivation of the learners, I think. Uh, I love that, Natalia. That's bringing forward a thread we've heard in some of the other webinars and that we've been working with all year of centering the learner and really attending to the learner's interests and talents and also their social and emotional needs and interests in the moment. I love that. Um, there are a couple of questions about younger learners. So um, Mohammed is asking, how can critical thinking be inculcated among young learners in the classroom? And Valentina is asking, imagine a class with six to 10 uh, with many students ages 6 to 10 who are trying to learn English, but their levels are variable, how would you organize the lesson? How would you set up the curriculum? So I'm just going to combine those questions to ask you, um, you're preparing future teachers. Are some of them working at the primary uh, level? And if so, are they able to use these methods of working with literature and poetry with the younger learners? Or do you have any experience with that? Well, I know that my students, some of them who work at the primary level, they mostly use some rhymes. You know, some rhymes like a po like poems, because if it's just very young learners, still 10 years of age, probably it's very difficult for such learners maybe to analyze poems. But, you know, when I was at school and I was in the sixth form, I was 12, we read the poems by Rob Burns, so, and Byron, some passages, and it was very interesting, actually, you know, though it was difficult, but I still can recite some, some of the lines. 
The major aspect I know that some teachers may underestimate it a little bit because they think that we need to develop speaking, modern language, no, not this poetic language, but I guess that it's very beneficial for critical, for development of thinking. Ah, wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, Laura, thank you. Laura is sharing a poem by Shel yeah. Silverstein. What if? Do you want to say something, Laura? Natalia, for the, that poem that you share, the if poem, there is a poem called What If that's written for children. Um, so I really like the idea of using the um, using poetry with younger learners with language they understand. And like you said, the rhythm of poetry, but getting at some of those deeper thoughts, those critical thoughts. So that's a great poem. Um, what if last night while I lay thinking here, some what ifs crawled inside my ear and pranced and partied all night long and sang their same old what if song. What if I'm dumb in school? What if they've closed the swimming pool? What if I get beat up? What if I start to cry? What if I flunk that test? You know, and so it's all these things that children might think. So it's it's sort of a parallel. So kind of answering that question and you can have, um, obviously you can control it. You could just use, as you did, Natalia, such a good suggestion is you don't have to use the whole poem. You can just use a few of those lines and have the children think, you know, what are the, I mean, obviously in Ukraine, there's a lot of what ifs you know, some really scary what ifs that are happening for children. Um, so I, I really love that as a poetry, as a, a vehicle for, for the language teaching, but it's not like reading a whole story or a whole, not, it's, it's just a few words, but it really gets right to the heart of things. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Laura, for sharing that. And um, there's one other question here about your, your methodology. Um, also, Natalia, are you focusing on the content and the message of the poems or also the rhetorical devices? Um, and I think you've, you've started to answer that. And, and Laura, you were suggesting some other answers to that, but I just want to turn that over to you, Natalia, for any other thoughts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Actually, mostly maybe on the cons content, but also on stylistic devices as well. You know, like some metaphors, simile, repetitions, that's also on this, mostly on the lexical level and a little bit less on syntactic level. So, because I don't know, <laughs> it's much more difficult to, for students to analyze syntactic level and to, especially to analyze the rhyme, you know. So, like this just now. Maybe but, I should improve with analysis of rhyme, with syntaxes, but yes, I am working on it as well. <laughs> Maybe there's some collaborative projects ahead for you and other faculty as you continue to develop your methodologies. This is wonderful. What a delight to hear from you, Natalia, to hear your poetry recitations. And I love, I can just picture nine-year-old Natalia um, memorizing and reciting Kipling. Um, I think that's lovely. And I think that goes back to the question about working with children and poetry, um, you know, at various levels and in various ways. Uh, and so thank you for introducing these ideas. Um, we may come back to the topic of teacher identity more broadly after our next presentation, um, because I was very intrigued by your notes around the fact that um, teacher identity is dynamic, it's always changing, and it's in formation in particular historical moments, particular political moments, um, and particular social uh, circles and, and um, realities. And so it'll be interesting to talk about that also after we hear from our next presenter, um, who's going to share with us her creative methodologies for engaging faculty um, in colleagues in learning about um, in learning about the the English language, but also preparing to teach. So let me open my slide deck. My apologies for the the mess there. Um, I'm thank you so much again, Natalia. And I think uh, Hannah, it's going to be really interesting um, for you to pick up some of the threads. I imagine that we just heard from Natalia. Um, I'm so excited to introduce Hannah, who is a very creative and vivacious force um, in the TESOL field in Ukraine. 
um, very active with many projects, many collaborations, and so many visions of how to do this work in new and innovative and exciting ways. And she's going to present today on using the interactive film club technology in the cell oriented or social and emotional learning oriented pre-service English teachers training. Hannah, we're so pleased for you to be here with us and to share your knowledge. I'm going to turn the stage over to you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for your support and encouragement. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, just a moment. Dear colleagues, uh, it's really my honor and privilege today to take part, uh, not even today, but to take part in this seminar series and today to present to such a wonderful professional and enthusiastic audience. And I'm deeply grateful for this chance to the US Embassy, to relocate team, to Childhood Education International, and the Center for Professional Learning, and in particular to our uh, brilliant facilitators, ear motivators, um, uh, Julie Casper, Meg Riley, um, Laura Becher. Alisa Vivishagin, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, I'm very thankful to all my colleagues uh, to you, um, from the project, from my university who uh, support me. Thank you very much. And uh, today uh, uh, I'm really excited uh, to you, um, present uh, to share my ideas uh, with you on using the interactive film club, film club technology in cell-oriented pre-service English teachers training. And uh, to start with, I'd like to speak on uh, what should pre-service English teachers education in the Ukraine focus in a time of crisis. Uh, well, and quite naturally, we should start with providing safe, supportive, positive learning environment for our students. Then it's crucial to enhance students' abilities for self-regulation, overcoming stress, succeeding in academic um, studies, their uh, future careers and life um, under dangerous and volatile circumstances. It's uh, necessary to form English language intercultural communicative competence to foster our students' personal development, to encourage critical thinking, creativity, an active stand, I'd say, and productive life strategies, and sure to assist students in becoming a subject to education and research. Um, well, and to meet all these challenges, I suggest using um, uh, the, method the methodology uh, uh, that is called uh, the Interactive Fil uh, English Teachers Film Club Technology. Uh, as I imagine, uh, it fits perfectly uh, in the co into the context, uh, context of cell-oriented curriculum. Uh, well, as I'm privileged to be the last to present um, uh, and uh, though in the course of the webinar uh, series, uh, the notion social emotional learning um, uh, was referred to by many speakers, still at this point, I feel it quite natural and appropriate to go back to the, the root so called and briefly outline what cell is. Social emotional learning is an educational method that aims to foster social and emotional skills within academic curricula, um, adopting strategies and learning behaviors that help our students to first identify and better comprehend their emotions, then uh, to feel emotions to the full, to demonstrate empathy for others. And uh, mm, uh, on the basis of these gained skills, abilities, to make positive, responsible decisions, um, to create frameworks uh, to achieve their uh, professional, academic, and personal goals, and to build positive relationships within their personal life and within their professional um, activities. Uh, according to uh, Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, or C-A-S-E-L. Uh, social emotional learning or cell involves five core competences uh, that can be applied both 
in and outside the classroom. And uh, as you remember, they are self-management that involves managing emotions and behaviors to achieve one's goals. Self-awareness that is recognizing one's emotions and values. Um, responsible decision-making, making, making mm, ethical, uh, reflected, constructive choices about personal and social behaviors, relationship skills, that is forming positive relationships, working in teams, cooperating, communicating, interacting, dealing effectively with conflicts, and social awareness, that is so showing understanding and empathy to others. Uh, well, uh, I'd say that uh, uh, there uh, applying cell as uh, an individual uh, um, discipline uh, is being argued. Cell can easily and naturally be woven into fabric of pre-service English teachers' curriculum in any university. Uh, nowadays, uh, educators and psychologists uh, have identified the critical importance of cell in education in all in any country. And sure, in Ukraine, where the war has brought changes and multiple challenges to both educators, uh, English teachers, and students, cell is crucial, really crucial, to provide a foundation for safe and positive learning to enhance students' ability to overcome difficulties and to succeed in academic studies and life. So, um, therefore, nowadays, uh, uh, the challenge for education systems is no longer if we incorporate cell, but rather how, especially in uh, the time of crisis. Well, uh, so, uh, as I have said, uh, Cell can be easily incorporated uh, into any, any academic curriculum. Um, the question uh, uh, was uh, quite extensively debated in the research. Uh, if it is more appropriate to integrate cell uh, only into a single course or to infuse uh, a focus on the cell dimension throughout the pre-service preparation process. The research results show that the second variant is preferable. Uh, that is, uh, the technologies are welcome that help uh, just integrating cell into the range of uh, disciplines in the academic curriculum. Uh, and at, the, at this point, let me introduce uh, using of uh, the English Teachers Film Club as the methodology, the tool to uh, infuse cell into pre-service English teachers curriculum. Uh, to start with, I'd like to outline the meta methodology uh, as it is. Um, so it is an interactive teaching technology that suggests uh, the subsystem, the um, educational model, uh, based on using authentic films for designing and conducting specially organized interactive training sessions aimed at forming students' multiple competences. And the, block, the blocks of competences are, first, English language intercultural communicative competence. Here, uh, we concentrate on uh, watching film episodes, doing tasks, discussing ide ideas, etc. That is uh, building up uh, our students' um, speech competences and lingua social cultural competence. Uh, the second point uh, uh, block of aims is connected with building up our students' professional communicative competence. Uh, that is mm, designing tasks here. I, I mean, using English uh, as the means of class communication, conducting a film session, uh, instructing, managing classes, etc. Uh, the third blo block of aims is connected with forming professional methodological competence of pre-service English teachers. Uh, here, uh, we focus on planning, training sessions, designing materials, planning materials, reflecting and discussing the teaching session. Uh, now, uh, uh, together with you, I'd like to just uh, uh, contemplate on if uh, the English teachers uh, film club as an interactive technology uh, can relate with them uh, quite naturally by, by its nature. Uh, um, thinking about that, uh, 
I suggest con considering the uh, main pillars, the main characteristic features of uh, this technology, and they are type of communication the technology is based on, type of thinking the film club uh, sessions are based on, and uh, the special design of these sessions. As far as uh, types or a type of communication that uh, is uh, central for uh, the English teachers film club as an interactive technology, it is interactive communication. Well, we know that there are three main types of communication, and they are perceptive communication that is focused on reciprocal emotional interpretation of each other as uh, personalities, as individuals, without, uh, without being in uh, teacher-student relations. Uh, basically, uh, this type of communication uh, is characteristic of non-educational activities. That is, uh, in a traditional, typical teacher-student relationships, uh, now we uh, don't pay much attention to this type of communication. Informative communication, the direct exchange of thoughts, ideas, informing, giving, uh, giving thoughts. Uh, in educational activities, it is uh, used very widely. And the last type, interactive communication. It's personal interaction that involves both perceptive and informative types of communication. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, even communicating personally, uh, we meet intellectual challenges, discuss uh, uh, really important issues, and apply critical thinking skills. Uh, this type of communication is based on both educational and non-educational activities. Uh, film Club, as an interactive technology, uh, is based on interactive communication, so it means that uh, uh, well, it fits into the uh, ideology of cell. Uh, it corresponds to cell uh, in this aspect. Um, so, um, uh, as the technology, uh, the interactive communication uh, in the English Teachers Film Club um, uh, is applied. Uh, in some ways, and uh, one of these ways is co-teaching. I'm very thankful to uh, my colleague Tatiana Karol, uh, who in her uh, really uh, wonderful, amazing session uh, presented co-teaching. Uh, and it occurred on me that <laughs> really a film club is based, is actually based on co-teaching. Uh, now, when we started uh, uh, in our research lab thinking about uh, film club, we uh, uh, and I, as uh, the leader of the lab, thought that uh, my students, uh, sure, will benefit much more when um, teaching uh, the basics of methodology to other students than just being taught and reproducing things. So uh, when students uh, design classes, when they, they uh, conduct film clubs, uh, they operate uh, on the uh, uh, highest level of uh, deals kind of experience. That is, they uh, uh, do what they preach. Uh, they apply the uh, professional methodological skills to uh, uh, design and conduct the clubs. And uh, the part of the students who uh, are the so-called audience, belong to the so-called audience, uh, reflect uh, and uh, realizing that they are the next to present, the next to design, uh, sure, uh, make the most from uh, this technology. So it does correspond uh, uh, to self. Uh, the next uh, pillar, uh, the if English teachers film club as an, act, as an interactive technology is based on is critical thinking. Uh, well, Natalia has already spoke, uh, spoken critical uh, thinking. Uh, I just like to remind that critical thinking uh, involves uh, some special skills, uh, some particular uh, target areas like uh, developing skills of reflection, analysis, 
structuring and documents, acquisition skills of uh, uh, getting, uh, acquiring the information, creativity, uh, discussing and debating and coming to you and getting uh, to you, um, uh, grounded decisions and being committed to applying critical thinking skills to the process to the world around in the personal and in professional life. Uh, so critical thinking uh, uh, emphasizes exposing students to real world problems encouraging open dialogue within a supportive environment and uh, uh, making stress and uh, um, uh, thinking about the values of the human humanities and humanism. Uh, so uh, in this aspect, um, the interactive technology, uh, the English Teachers Film Club, falls in line with a uh, cell T. Uh, critical thinking uh, develops uh, according to some particular, to, to, to definite particular, to, to particular stages. <laughs> Go through <laughs> three particular stages. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I suppose you remember them. These are stage of call where we motivate to give background knowledge and raise awareness on the problem. Uh, we eliminate difficulties and set goals. Uh, on the second stage, the stage of comprehension, uh, um, the person studies the material, learns the new information, gains understanding and integrates new ideas and facts. Uh, well, at this stage, our students uh, integrate the new information into the, uh, in, into the knowledge they um, uh, had before. And the third stage, stage of reflection when our students sum up make conclusions and incorporate the new information into one's knowledge system and life experience so these are these stages are applied in the interactive film club technology and they perfectly correspond uh fall in line with so uh when uh we um, encourage our students to uh um, feel their emotions to the full, to identify their emotions, to realize what they matter in their personal and professional life. Uh, mm, sorry, just a moment. <clears throat> so uh, to sum up, what, what are um, the most important, the key characteristics of the Future English Language Teachers Film Club? It is designed to uh, encourage students in interacting, communicating personally and meaningfully. And, meaningfully. Uh, and it, uh, it falls in line with cell T. Uh, uh, the technology encourages students to fulfill uh, a communicatively or personally oriented task. It can be problem oriented, professionally oriented, etc. Then the technologies encourage the technology encourages students to apply critical thinking and to meet intellectual challenges. Again, uh, it corresponds to cell. Uh, so it stimulates uh, our students generate creative solutions to complex problems, to work in small groups, to practice active collaboration and share responsibilities, and to provide cooperation and support. All these points uh, mm, fall in line with the cell ideas and correspond to that. So uh, mm, I make a conclusion that the interactive uh, English Teachers Film Club uh, technology, as it is, uh, mm, quite naturally corresponds to cell. Uh, and uh, if we want to make a particular accent on cell, uh, it only makes uh, the technology more powerful and more effective. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, I, told, uh, I said that uh, uh, the best way to introduce cell into curriculum, as the current res research shows, is to uh, uh, apply it in a range of disciplines 
taught within the curriculum. So where does English Teachers Film Club fit into cell-oriented pre-service teachers training? It can fit into the range of courses. Uh, first and foremost, uh, these are English practice courses, uh, reading, uh, listening, uh, than just general English, English practice. Uh, there can be different uh, variables, but the idea is that the block of English practice courses fits with the technologies very well. Then, uh, uh, TESOL courses. Uh, in my teaching English as a second language courses, I teach, uh, I present uh, the English Teachers Film Club as a technology. So I teach <laughs> to apply the technology and I ask my students to design film, film clubs and then later to use them during their teaching practice. This is the third, uh, third aspect in which we can apply the technology and extracurriculum events. As uh, the technology uh, started as an extracurriculum activity, um, I, um, I try to make my students' life more colorful, more interesting, to introduce some uh, um, uh, challenges uh, in developing critical thinking skills and widening their sociocultural horizons. So uh, this is where it started. Uh, well, I think that uh, it is quite a wide range of possibilities. Uh, so uh, it makes this technology quite universal. I'd like to show you uh, how it can be used in um, extracurriculum life of our students. Uh, just recently, uh, we used the technology when organizing, when organizing the contest. Uh, in the film based short essay writing, uh, senior school students from uh, the schools we work with uh, visited our film club. You can see that in the, in the slide. And then uh, they wrote uh, short essays. And that was a really interesting experience. And there we didn't instruct our uh, students um, about cell in particular. We didn't, we didn't say anything about that, actually. But uh, quite naturally, <laughs> uh, they applied cell by themselves. <laughs> it was very interesting indeed. Uh, so uh, we'll um, it just proves that the technology itself fits into self uh, very well. Uh, it uh, and uh, uh, I do believe that it offers the range of possibilities. And they are just um, perhaps to to, uh, to mention. Uh, I'd like to mention just some of them. Uh, it can suggest uh, strategies for bridging personal and professional development of pre-service English teachers. They watch films, uh, some new films, uh, impressive films, uh, and uh, they learn how to teach. And at the same time, they analyze their reaction, they reflect on their personal experience, and they reflect on their professional experience. Then it's a great source of positive intrinsic motivation. Uh, uh, we watch, we get inspired, we get motivated. And it gives stimuli to raise awareness of humanistic values because uh, if we select films for film clubs thoroughly, uh, we can really demonstrate great values, humanistic values to follow, and it can help us to survive through hard times. Uh, it is the technology that uh, quite naturally again gives an opportunity to plunge into English language culture. From a good fiction film, we learn uh, just very much uh, about the language, about the culture, about the past, about the values and so on. Um, uh, and um, uh, the technology can offer procedures uh, some uh, solutions, definite solutions, uh, how to learn skills of, of being intellectually, emotionally, communicatively, and socially active and responsible. All these characteristics uh, uh, go in line with social emotional learning concepts. So uh, we can say that the technology, the methodology uh, has a complex character and uh, with a huge potential for reaching multiple targets within cell-oriented uh, curriculum. Uh, to, before going on, 
Mm -hmm. I, excuse yes. my interruption. I want us to have some time for a discussion because there are some great questions coming in. Um, are you yeah. nearing the end or maybe we can fast forward to a conclusion? Um, no. Would you like me to uh, just move faster to the end or just make a stop? Um, maybe I, I'd love to hear your concluding thoughts before we open the questions, um, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. So, well, uh, then perhaps uh, uh, I, uh, I'd say some words about how uh, the film English Teachers Film Club uh, works. And then we'll be open to answering questions and perhaps my slide will fit with the questions. Perfect. Thank um, you. So when we uh, apply the technology, uh, we uh, can identify three stages uh, within each two groups of students uh, um, play different functional roles, professional roles. Uh, step one is the phase when pre-service English teachers within the first group, uh, usually these are one, two students, design uh, a club training session and get ready and plan, design, get ready to conduct the session. The second group of students uh, get ready to take part in this in the session. Uh, the second step is the training session itself, when uh, the uh, students in, in charge conduct the club training session. Uh, and the second group of students uh, at the same time are the audience, the students, and uh, the future teachers. So they react, they do tasks, and at the same time, they try analyze what is going on, what is happening from the methodological uh, point of view. And uh, step three is uh, when uh, students who designed the club and students who um, just participated in the club analyze and discuss the session, identify problems, suggest possible corrections, uh, and make reflection. Uh, so these are the three main stages. Uh, then perhaps I'll skip the part uh, when I describe in details how it works. Um, and I'm ready to answer the questions and if necessary to use the slide, the remaining slides for that. Oh, that's perfect, Anna. Yeah, great idea. Keep them open. That's excellent. Um, okay. Thank you so much. I, there are lots of questions because I think there's so much interest. And so I wanted to make sure we can get to some of those. Um, one of the questions relates to something you said very early on. First of all, I want to thank you for making that explicit connection between cell and the work you're doing with film. And I loved what you said about infusing social emotional learning in the entire teacher preparation program, not in a standalone course, but making it sort of the backbone and the heart of everything you're doing. And thank you for making that clear and visible for us. Um, you mentioned also when you were talking about critical thinking and social emotional learning, this idea of encouraging open dialogue. And I know that's an important part of your teacher's film club. There's a question from Valentina about how do you encourage students to share their ideas if they're shy or they're not sure how to express their views? And I also think about within the current um, political and social moment, people may be worried about expressing certain viewpoints. Um, and so thinking about all of those things, what are your methods and your mechanisms, Hana, for including everybody's voice, making sure there's equity of voice and everybody feels that they can participate fully regardless of their perspective or their English proficiency, if they're shy, how do you encourage them all to participate in that open dialogue? How do you, how do you organize that dialogue? Thank you very much for the question. When we talk about the English Teachers Film Club, uh, a great role is played by the fact that the club is designed and conducted by the peers. Uh, it is much easier to react to the peers' work. It's number one. Number two, uh, um, at this stage of uh, the life of this technology, uh, the students get, uh, uh, all the students get the task to design, to make an attempt to design a film club. 
uh, the better club uh, the clubs uh, get a, a longer life. They are redesigned, <laughs> uh, polished, brushed up, brushed up, and so on. But uh, the point is that every student knows that he has to design a club. He's interested, and in some time he will be a presenter, a designer, and so on. And it makes the atmosphere more relaxed, uh, kind of uh, more uh, collegial, I would say. Uh, and uh, I love this atmosphere of uh, cooperating. And very often uh, the students who brush up the club know the students who first designed it. And they cooperate, they work together. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, the first aspect. The second aspect is that really it's quite hard to um, encourage students to uh, react to you um, the tasks within the club, when they act as students, not as future teachers, but as students. Uh, now, our rule <laughs> that is on one of the slides <laughs> is not to press, just uh, and not to rely much on discussion. Uh, the film club contains lots of episodes and lots of small tasks like matching, gap filling, and so on and so forth. And so the the, the uh, better part of the time, students are very busy with doing these quite simple tasks. And at the end of the club, they feel more relaxed, perhaps. When they, uh, well, I worked out that this is one of the reasons. Uh, at the very beginning, they usually don't want to, to, to join in, to speak much. But then at the end, after all those uh, activities, very, uh, very, very clear, in fact. Uh, so it, it's clear what to do. Uh, then when they have already watched the film, have done all those exercises uh, that uh, promote some values, promote the, some ideas, they are more ready to speak. So um, I hope that I've answered uh, the question. That's great. And there's um, some response, including from myself, the peer-to-peer -peer aspect being so important. And we can think about that with the earlier questions about younger learners all, all the way up through adult learners. And it's so important for peers to be leading each other. And I love, Hannah, how you're um, you know, demonstrating how to do this and then handing it over to your teacher candidates so that they are owning it learning from it, modeling it, and then able to carry it forward in their own ways. It's beautiful. The other questions are more sort of around logistics. And so I'm going to group them together and you can answer as you like. Um, there's questions about how do you select the films? What's your criteria? Are you focusing on the language aspects, the vocabulary and the grammar or the content? Go, you have a slide for that. Um, yes. <laughs> and related, related to that, there's a question about do you use other media like YouTube videos or TV shows or is it only full length movies? Um, there's a question about how often do you conduct the film nights or the film activities? And then there's also the question about do your students only watch the films or do they also make their own videos or films for discussion? Mm, thank you for the questions. Uh, the answer to the first question is uh, in the slide, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, here, uh, in this particular case, I've concentrated on uh, the role of the club in cell-oriented training. But uh, actually, uh, on the original slide, <laughs> Uh, the vocabulary and the topic, the topical, um, uh, the topical potential of the film. We start with the uh, with fitting uh, the film into the topic, then the vocabulary potential, then the role of uh, characters, uh, clear plot line. The plot line should be of the um, of the kind that uh, can be divided into episodes, because there are some wonderful, absolutely wonderful films like Interstellar, for example which I just adore, but uh, I, I, I may, don't make an attempt to make a club from the film because I can't imagine how I can cut the film, uh, what to cut. <laughs> Every episode matters. So the film should have some potential for cutting and uh, uh, it should uh, have some, uh, reg mostly uh, modern films have some plot lines. Uh, we usually select the plot line that is important for our topic. Uh, it can be an unexpected twist, like this one. So uh, this is the task from the film club based on Fantastic Beasts. 
and we uh, try to concentrate uh, on juvenile delinquency too, on the causes and the roots of problem behavior. And we took Credence Barbone as a problem teenager and try to analyze <laughs> his background, his reactions, and uh, the way he's manipulated by uh, the grown-ups around him. So it can be quite an unexpected twist, but in any case, uh, you should uh, concentrate on some, uh, uh, on a topic and one or two mostly or, um, plot lines. You, you can't cover all the problems of the film. It's impossible. Uh, then the question was connected with taking part in the, um, uh, recording. Well, um, I can't remember. Uh, well, uh, I, I haven't practiced recording and analyzing. Uh, we uh, conduct the club, we analyze the club, and then at our uh, TESOL classes, we can just speak about that again. Uh, we can discuss it again. How often? It depends. It depends. Uh, uh, clubs are designed by students. Students are human beings. Uh, they are very busy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, then it, uh, it depends on the part of the, uh, of the term. Uh, very often at the beginning of the term, uh, we have uh, only a few clubs and then students start designing and, and getting ready and at the end of the term we have a bunch of clubs and we don't know uh, how to fit them into the month or two that are left. Um, I, I have found that is, it is, um, it is, I, I try to plan the club, to, to conduct the clubs, to plan the clubs uh, regularly, but it depends. So it's a uh, shifting, living, a very, very, you know, non-set, non-set uh, community, like film club designers. <laughs> the technology is not rigid. <laughs> Yes, I love that, Hana. And thank you for the reminder that students are human beings and so are teachers and educators, right? And we all are working within our capacity and our constraints. Um, I'm going to ask if I could um, take the screen back. I, I want to share my slide to close us out, but to first say a deep, deep um, thank you to you, Hana, and to you, Natalia, for your brilliant presentations and thought-provoking that, um, Hannah, there are some additional questions in the chat, and so I encourage you to continue dialoguing and sharing with people there um, if you want. If you want to share your emails, uh, Natalia or Hannah, uh, I'll leave that to you to decide, and then people can follow up with you with additional questions. Um, yes, yes, but sure, sure. What, what a rich and full session it's been. Always, you know, if we have a few presenters or we have a lot of presenters, there's never enough time. I, you know, we need we need weeks together in in deep conversation. Um, but each of these sessions is so inspiring and gives us so much to think with and to work with. And I know that all of the educators on this call are inspired individuals who are looking for new methodologies, who are critiquing and thinking about their current methodologies and syllabi and courses and trying to make those more responsive. And I really appreciate how both Hannah and Natalia today pointed to being student-centered, really thinking about the social and emotional well-being of ourselves and of our students, and thinking creatively with film and with literature and with poetry to provoke critical thinking, deep thought, and really um, profound connections uh, between individuals and between individuals and the content that they're going to be bringing to their classrooms. Um, the teaching that they're going to be doing. I want to thank all of our presenters from this webinar series. It has been amazing. And there was a question in the chat. If you missed some of the sessions, how do you catch them? We will be posting them and we will update you um, with that post. If you've signed up for them, you're getting the emails with the links, but we'll also post them um, on our website and share that with you. And I'm not sure the Rello office might be posting them as well. So we'll be in touch with more details on that. And there's a QR code here um, and a bit.ly link, you can sign up for our newsletter um, at Childhood Education International so you don't miss any of those updates. Um, we will send the recording and certificates for this session within the next few days. Uh, we want to invite everyone to please, if you haven't already, join the Facebook and or the LinkedIn groups at TESOL Faculty United for Ukraine. 
These are groups that the community of 30 brilliant educators we've been working with all year, they formed these communities to continue their collaborations and their discussions and to open those up to all of you so that the conversation can continue. We can all continue to grow and learn together. So please do join and participate in the ways that feel good to you. Um, and we have a new project coming online very soon. And within the next week or two weeks, I'll be sending out information on that. It will focus on classroom teachers at the secondary and tertiary levels who are teaching English. Um, so please do sign up for notifications uh, so that you can get information on that. And we'll look forward to sharing more soon. Um, but as we route up today, thank you is not a sufficient phrase. I wish I had worked on my um, poetry, Natalia. Now you're now you're making me think, what, what are the lines I should be reciting in gratitude to all of you? Um, but just from the bottom of my heart and speaking for my team, Meg and Alyssa, thank you for your support and thank you for bringing so much to this community. Speaking for all of us um, from the Rello office, Jen and Aliona, thank you for being here. All of the faculty, what a brilliant community, what a force of life and light in such a challenging time. All of you are change makers. You make a difference every day with every one of your students. You make a difference in the way you show up and come together for each other. You are creating a brighter future for all of us as we learn to communicate with each other, both verbally through our vocabularies and our syntax, but also through our hearts and through our emotions. And it has just been a pleasure to lead this webinar series, facilitate this webinar series with all of you. Again, thank you to all of our presenters. Thank you to all of our participants who have been part of this community. We look forward to seeing you in Facebook and LinkedIn to continue the conversations. Um, and I'll be in touch with everyone again soon. Please stay safe, take good care of yourselves, stay in community, stay in dialogue. That is our strength and our power. We're not alone in any of this work. Um, with that, I'm going to stop sharing so we can see each other for a celebratory moment and invite you to use your emojis to share your gratitude, to share your thanks, to share your celebrations. If you'd like to unmute yourself, to say congratulations, to say thank you, please do so. What an honor it is to work and know all of you, work with and know all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So Thank you very much for support, encouragement, and great motivation. So uh, you've made a community. Right. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a real wonder. <laughs>